My name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, September 17th. As is usual for our evening services, we will sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be uplifting. And so without further ado, if you have a songbook at Northfield, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. If you would turn them to number 238, uh, the title of the song is You Are the Song That I Sing. You Are the Song That I Sing. <clears throat> you are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody, you are the harmony, praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. And if you would, number seven. 79, I love you, Lord. 7, 79. I love you, Lord. <clears throat> I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. To worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. And before the Lord's Supper, number 354, I gave my life for thee. 354, I gave my life for thee. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My Father's house of light, my glory circled throne. I laugh for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for me? I left, 
I left it all for thee. Hast thou left all for me? I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? And I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? We've come to the part of our uh, service this evening where we observe the Lord's Supper. We are instructed to do this each first day of the week as per uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Uh, we know that the early church did that. It was instituted by Jesus on the night which he was betrayed. It was further substantiated and reiterated by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, where he talked about taking uh, the bread and taking the wine uh, in memory of Jesus Christ. And so as we do this, there are some things that we need to remember. The song that we sang reflected uh, some of those thoughts, I think. It says, he gave his life for us, his precious blood that he shed. He, it says he suffered much for us, more than any tongue can recite. And understand that he left a, a comfortable home in heaven with God the Father to take the form of a man, uh, to take the form of a man who could feel the things that you and I feel. Uh, obviously, he felt the agony of the cross, uh, that he could be tempted just as you and I are tempted. And it's so reassuring for us to know that we have a great high priest that is Jesus Christ. So when we gather about his table on the first day of the week, we do so remembering that uh, through the ultimate wisdom of God, that Jesus gave up his life. He gave up his life for each one of us. And so as we partake of the bread, let's remember the body that suffered on the tree. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we can't even imagine the pain that your son suffered as he hung on the cross. Uh, we just pray to Heavenly Father that we will understand that he went through that pain, that his body was racked with that pain being nailed to the cross, that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have a home one day with you in heaven. As we partake, let's remember the body of Jesus. We do so in his precious name. Amen. The song says, Thy precious blood I shed, that thou mightst ransom be and quickened from the dead. Uh, Jesus gave his life. He allowed that uh, blood that uh, that moves things through our body and, and actually sustains life. Uh, that blood just uh, oozed and, and flowed from his body. And we know that it is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood that uh, washes away our sins. Let's pray for the fruit of the body. 
as we partake this cup, we just pray that we will remember the life that ebbed from our Savior as the blood flowed from his body. And that such the, the wonderful symbolism that is there, that it is the blood that washes away our sins. Help us to keep that paramount in our hearts and in our minds as we partake. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. As we look at the last verse of the song that we just sang, it says, I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. Yet the last uh, line says, I bring, I bring rich gifts for thee. What hast thou brought for me? We have the opportunity to give a rich gift back to the Lord in the form of uh, the part of our service that deals with giving. And so as we think of our contribution, remember, he brought it all down for us. Indeed, what we have is just on loan. Uh, we came into this world with nothing. We will leave it with nothing. I just pray that uh, as we give back, we'll understand that we're giving back to the church which is God's vehicle here on earth, uh, the, the kingdom of God on earth, that is to bring others to the Lord, that is to do his work, uh, perhaps to feed the needy, uh, to do what is necessary, that uh, uh, our God's name will be glorified. Let's pray as we give. A gracious, dear God, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to give back. Help us that we understand that we are to lay by in store. We are to give as we have been prospered. Uh, our giving is to be looked upon as a sacrifice. Because if we give with no sacrifice, we're giving from a plenty and we're not giving uh, and understanding that uh, you deserve all that we give. And so as we give back to you, let's do so cheerfully. Let's do so with an open heart. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing is number 681. 681. The title of this song is more holiness give me it's a wonderful song if you have the song uh sometimes i i just like to to mouth the song as a poem and think of all of the uh the things that have been given to us through jesus christ more holiness give me More holiness give me, more strivings within, more patience in suffering, more sorrow for sin, more faith in my Savior, more sense of His care, more joy in his service, more purpose in prayer, more gratitude give me, more trust in the Lord, more pride in his glory, more hope in his word. More tears of his sorrow, more pain at his grief, more meekness and trial, more praise for relief, more purity give me, 
more strength to overcome, more freedom from earth stains, more longings for home, more fit for the kingdom, more useful I'd be, more blessed and holy, more Savior like me. I hope many of you sang with us. Uh, it's just wonderful to get to sing uh, praises to the Lord. Uh, praises to a Lord who is magnificent, who has given us everything that we have. And through him, the hope of eternal salvation. This evening, I have a short message for you. Uh, they are in terms of 15, 15 uh, different and hopefully unique little facts about the church. The title of the lesson is Some Fast Facts About the Church. The church is God's kingdom here on earth. Let's make no mistake about that. And uh, we know uh, from our Bibles that the church was around at the very, very, very beginning. If we look at Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 31, it says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the glorious throne, his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And if we go all the way down to verse 34, it says, And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed to my father, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. It was prepared for us from the foundation of the world. That's very, very clear. Daniel predicted that in his dream that he interpreted in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 through 35, as he ex had talked about the different kingdoms that, that would be established. One of those kingdoms was the church. The church was prepared by preaching repentance and baptism. That's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, and Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. John the Baptist came preaching repentance, preaching that uh, being sorry for our sins and not wanting to go back to that old path. And uh, the church, God's kingdom on this earth, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, is a crystal clear picture of God's ultimate wisdom. The church was founded because of the wisdom of God. He knew that he need to, needed to establish his kingdom here on earth as a precursor to the ultimate kingdom, that being the kingdom of heaven, which hopefully all of us will experience. The, the church is, according to Ephesians 3.11, uh, God's uh, eternal purpose he, he explained that to us and he said, this is my purpose, that there would be a church. And he came to establish that church, according to Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18, when Peter uh, explained to him, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus exclaimed, you know, you didn't get this from human beings. You got this from a greater source. And with that, uh, he said, you are Peter, and upon this rock, and that was Peter's confession, the church would be formed. 
With that, Jesus is the head of the church. That's what Colossians 1, 18 says to us, that he made Christ the head. He is the foundation of the church, and he is the head of the church. And then there's that old joining the church thing. People don't join the church. According to Acts chapter 2, verse 41 and 47, uh, when people believe, repent, confess, and are baptized, they don't join the church. It says they are added. It's not us adding. It's not people adding. It's God adding folks to his church. Every church is to be governed on its own. Titus and Second Timothy give the qualifications for those leaders of the church, the elders and the deacons that are to guide us into uh, what we are supposed to be. And we know that the Apostle Paul compared uh, the church to a body with different parts. And it said that each part has uh, an important role uh, in the, the church itself and God's kingdom here on earth. The church, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, is to uphold the truth according to the scriptures, because each scripture is given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The church was purposed with a great price. A moment ago, we observed the Lord's Supper, and that Lord's Supper was for us to understand that the church was purposed with and purchased with the blood of Christ. And finally, uh, the church was, was comprised of those that were saved. God added those to his numbers. And it was called by God through his gospel, according to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. I hope we understand the importance of the church and how important it is for us to understand that it is God's kingdom here on earth that is almost kind of a dress rehearsal for what heaven will be about. And with that, I hope that you are part of God's church, his one church, the church that was purchased with his blood. And so we invite you to come. If you need to come, we pray that you will. Uh, we offer you that invitation, and if you want to do it now, please be in touch with us, and we'll get to you. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your church. Oh, Rachel, grateful for the love that we share for one another in your kingdom here on earth. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to be uh, worthwhile members of your church as we do your will in all things. Forgive us indeed when we sin. Bless us, be with us, and comfort us. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all. We praise thee, O God, for the song.